it's October 5th, 2015, and this is a commentary about the work of a man named Daryl Ray and his Secular Sexuality podcast, and also a group that uh, he helped found called Recovery From Religion. Um, and the the basic, uh, I've posted a fair amount on my blog about this, which I'll provide a link to. But the uh, main commentary I wanted to, uh, verbal commentary I wanted to provide was that uh, um, Dr. Ray, I believe he has a an educational doctorate, or Mr. Ray, um, his main uh, fallacy uh, with regard to the recovery from religion paradigm is assuming, is apparently assuming that uh, jumping to the uh, ultra-left uh, and being uh, ultra-permissive about uh, all things sexual is an answer to the ultra-right and how they engage in a great deal of shaming with regard to sexuality and control. And um, it's taken me a number of years to realize uh, that that uh, ping-pong game is an abusive one. So the ultra-right abuses people uh, first by too much shaming, but also uh, with forcing people into a rebellious response. And uh, Dr. Mr. Ray, I think I'll just call him Mr. Ray, because uh, I'm not sure an educational doctorate is much of a doctorate, but uh, in any case, uh, Mr. Ray, Daryl Ray, um, his, he is out, quote-unquote, as a polyamorous person, and that's a person who has multiple partners in one house and uh, supposedly agreed upon, um, but uh, so his... And then also the uh, the symbol uh, that he has chosen for his uh, podcast and his work is a uh, slightly more color modif slightly modified, just kind of added some extra colors to the uh, trans the symbol for uh, transgenderism, transgender acceptance and advocacy. So when you catch those two things together, when you catch all the all that together, he he heads up a so-called recovery from religion group. He heads up a secular sexuality podcast um, when you merge all of that uh, together uh, with the fact that he is uh, his, the symbol he's chosen is for his uh, work is transgen transgenderism advocacy and promotion and uh, the fact that he promotes uh, uh, non-monogamous non-monogamy as a normal, supposedly, probably according to him, healthy type of activity for humans, when you merge all those together, you realize that there is a great deal of problem with the recovery uh, from religion uh, movement and activities. Uh, you know, you, if, you, if you engaged in his kind of recovery, you'd probably need recovery from recovery, or maybe even recovery from recovery from recovery, because his type of recovery is not any sort of recovery. Um, it's hard work for an ex-religionist to realize that uh, recovery from religion does not ideally or most uh, uh, beneficially involve doing the exact opposite of whatever it is the religion uh, advised. So humans are not bonobos. And when, when people, when scientists and other people went out and discovered bonobos and then other people learned about the scientists work they said hey oh my god it's a it's it's like our dreams come true you know uh, bonobos uh, have uh, sex with in every possible combination with multiple partners and and uh what not and so uh these people think hey because maybe i want to cheat I found these animals who, who cheat, who are closely related to us, therefore, human nature must be more bonobo-like, and it would just be great if we just all acted like bonobos, because then we would just live in a utopian society, and everything would be perfect. 
But we are not bonobos. We are a different species. A different genus, even. If those mean, if genus, different genus means something, it means you're even more unrelated to something. Okay. So, human nature is not bonobo nature. I mean, there are some elements, but if you, a, a really good way to mess up kids and destroy families and destroy lives is to act like human nature is exact, should be ideally what bonobos do. And another thing uh, that I've talked about on my blog uh, is how Daniel Dennett uh, came up with this idea that uh, religion you know, is a natural phenomenon. He's wrote, wrote a book about it, talked about it, and I think that's a very, it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous idea. Like Darwin had a dangerous idea, okay, Charles Darwin. Well, Daniel Dennett had a dangerous idea, and his a dangerous idea is that religion is a natural phenomenon. Now, Daniel Dennett himself, he's most of his talking about that uh, subject uh, revolves around how uh, that means that, uh, you know, there's no God in religions, and that's okay, but people who come up with dangerous ideas, sometimes they don't, they don't fully comprehend themselves the full entire impact and scope of their ideas. So, um, one key thing to realize is that if you realize that religions are fully natural evolution, products of evolution, um, that uh, there's there, the codes of contact in religion cannot, can have some pretty damn beneficial uses and benefits for helping keep people happy. So, for example, in evolution, if there's one trait that naturally occurs that is kind of negative, okay, then how do you counter that? Well, you could have another, a, a code of conduct, which is also naturally derived, that counters that. So they're kind of counter each other, okay? Um, so what's an example of that? Well, humans get upset and angry, but we could have a rules, codes of conduct, which says if you uh, are violent against somebody, then maybe you need to go to jail, okay? That's one example. Um, and another example would be is if you uh, cheat on your wife, or if your wife cheats on you, they, you or your wife could get a deadly STD and die and leave your family with no father or no mother. So what's a good way to avoid that? Well, a natural uh, way that you know evolution could generate a response to that is by having a religious code of conduct that says it would, it's a bad idea to cheat on your wife and to, or cheat on your husband and to get uh, an S STD that kills you or, you know, and destroys your family. And also, uh, you know, there's a, la a, a trust issue with regard to uh, uh, relationships. And if you're going to break that trust, then it shows maybe you're, you know, you're not really up to what it takes to keep a family going. If you're just a liar, you're going to cheat. And also, uh, the human animal, male and female, have, have an interest in ensuring that their children are their genetic uh, direct descendants, you know, and not, not uh, a kukold uh, type of situation where the kid that you're raising is not directly related to you because your spouse cheated on you. So there's all, there's all these things that are nat natural reasons for how humans can be more happy. And some of those codes of conduct, fully natural codes, are couched within a religious context. Doesn't mean the codes are, are useless. And if you think they are, then you're essentially naive and, and being stupid. So, um, so that's kind of the crux of uh, what the situation is, is being honest about the fully natural roots of sexual shame. And Dr. Uh, Mr. Dr. Ray, he uh, spends a lot of his uh, time uh, with his uh, activities saying that uh, everything he does 
and you know he when he has questions on his pod guests on his podcast he says oh are the questions have to be sex positive well what if your guest is a whore who is hijacking the natural sexual system in our you know that came from evolution what if your guest is trying to get money by hijacking that natural system is that a good thing or a bad thing would asking them about that be negative well it might be negative to you know from the perspective of the the per, the abuser of the, from the per, per perspective of the whore or the perspective of the poor one porn 1.0 1 person but it's a it's a valid scientific question a valid skeptical question so we need to get science and skepticism back into the liberal side of the dogma situation. Liberals have dogma. Liberals have de facto religions. Liberals have, uh, you know, unquestionable tenets. They don't, they don't like questioned. And permissive sexuality, the abusive nature of that, needs to be called into question. And if you think, if you as a lefty think that's negative, well, too bad. That's the way science works. That's the way skepticism works. So, anyway, that's my comment about all that stuff. So if you want to read more, you can check my blog posts. Okay, have fun.